it's probably very hard for you to not notice that it is summer, <laughs> which can mean only one thing. It is time for us to review our ideal summer fabrics and how to work with them. That's everything from what the fabrics are, what kind of patterns you can use with them, best tips for cutting them, how you should be sewing them, and then finally how you were going to be pressing them. I have my Oliso Pro TG1600 iron here. I'll be showing you what settings to use on the Oliso Pro iron or whatever iron you have. The Oliso one happens to be great because it has so many different options for your fabrics. So within each category, there's like five different clicks. One, two, three, four, five. And then you move up to the next one, wool silk. And then there's the linen cotton, which is the absolute hottest. And then within that, you can also add steam. So we have th uh, four different steam functions, no steam all the way up to high steam, which is also really great. You're going to notice today, a lot of our fabrics are going to vary in terms of content. And sometimes fabrics love a lot of heat and a lot of steam, and sometimes they don't. So having this many options to choose between really helps you customize your pressing experience, uh, no matter what fabric you're using. So we'll get into this a little bit more here in a second. But first up, our very first fabric is this uh, performance fabric. But okay, so performance fabric. So this is the type of stuff that you would use to make uh, t-shirts or tank tops or any kind of clothing where you would need it to do a lot of work for you. I'm talking about like moisture wicking technology. I'm talking about being, it being breathable, um, all of those kinds of things. Yes, you can work out in them, but you know, on those hot humid days when you've just got some errands to run, you want to throw on some, you know, casual shorts and a t-shirt. These types of fabrics are really great for that as well. So this uh, performance fabric is particularly interesting because it's not 100% polyester, which is nice. Um, so this is 50% nylon, 34% polyester, and 7% spandex. I've got my trusty, um, it says Luna Graphics Co, but now they are Stitch Buzz. My uh, trusty stretch ruler here where you can determine how much stretch it has. These things are super easy to use and I love to bring them to the store with me just to double check um, that it's going to work for my pattern. But this has got, woo, 100% stretch. So that's really great. And if you want to check the crosswise grain, it should have a little bit less. Yeah, we're only getting to like uh, right at 90, maybe 95, something like that. So that's the stretch quality on something like this. This one, because um, it does have all of that nylon in it, it is very lightweight. It is very silky. It is very smooth. <laughs> um, I can hardly describe just how the hand feel is of this. It's really, really great. But that can also make it super tricky to sew with. So. I highly recommend you get yourself a pair of serrated scissors and it really just helps keep the fabric from shifting forward on you as you go to cut and it gives you more accurate um, cutting lines as you're using it. I would not use uh, pattern weights and a rotary cutter on this. I just think that the the paper, like any paper that you're using is just going to completely shift all around on this. So a lot of pins and using a good pair of serrated scissors is how you're going to get those kind of athleisure patterns cut out. Now, when it comes to sewing, um, I went ahead and did a little test sample for you here. And this is what I was able to get. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, in order to achieve this, I had to use a, I used the ballpoint Jersey needle size 70 and I did my machine's standard zigzag stitch. I did go up to 4.0 in length just to give me um, a little bit of extra length so they wouldn't be so tight together. And this will allow you to kind of get a little bit of stretch within your seam allowance as well. Of course, if you have a serger, feel free to run this through your serger, but again, use those size 70 ballpoint needles, both of your needles in your serger. Okay, so pressing this guy, you can kind of see, you know, when it comes to these um, performance athletic knits, 
if you are serging them, you're just going to, you know, press it to the side. If you're using your zigzag stitch on your serger, I would be inclined to press them open, trim them back a whole lot. Again, that's why these um, serrated scissors are really good because you can get, you know, really close to that seam line and not worry about anything getting away from you, um, which is really nice. So um, once you do that, then you can just press to one side. Again, we're going to go, because there's so much uh, man-made material, <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is man-made material, we're going to go pretty low on the heat and we're not going to do any steam at all. It's a performance fabric that's meant to not accept moisture. So adding moisture to that really is counterintuitive to what the fabric wants. So we just want a little bit of heat um, and no steam and just run it lightly over until you get a light, gentle press. The patterns that you choose for a fabric like this are not going to be very complicated. Uh, they're going to be probably a bodice, maybe a sleeve, and some neck and arm bindings if you don't do the sleeve. And that's it, you know? So you're not gonna be having to press a ton and you know, your neck and arm bindings should be drafted in a way that it tells the fabric which way to go. So pressing isn't super imperative, but you can see that with a lighter heat and no steam, we're able to get a pretty decent press into this fabric. Enough for it to kind of just sit to one side at the very least. Okay, next up is the complete opposite of a performance fabric, and that is cotton gauze. Cotton gauze is 100% cotton. The thing about it that makes it so unique and special is its looser weave. You can see it is see-through. Not totally, but it's it's not op opaque at all, um, but it is 100% cotton, super breathable, super lightweight, and very, very comfortable to wear. When you double it up, so if you made a self um, lining, you can see instantly that resolves any of the opacity issues. So if you're worried about um, your garment being see-through, just know that you'll probably have to line it with either the same fashion fabric or some kind of like 100% cotton to maintain that breathability factor that it has. But leave the sleeves like semi-sheer, do something really billowing, do like a lot of ruffles or um, a flounce or something like that, and that would be really, really gorgeous. Cutting this is super simple. Because it's so lightweight, because it's 100% cotton, you know, it's not going to be shifty on you. You're going to be able to keep your layers together really easily. And you can use a rotary cutter to cut it all out with your weights. Very, very beginner friendly, easy fabric to work with. In terms of sewing, so I wanted to show you a couple of things. My instinct initially was to use a smaller size 70 universal needle. Smaller needle because it is so lightweight, but I chose universal because I was like, oh, it's cotton, you know, universal. And this is what happened. Um, you can see that it actually started, the white threads, it actually started pulling out threads that belong to the fabric and that shouldn't happen. So I switched to a size 70 sharp needle and that is what you see here. So the tension is off a little bit, probably need to loosen the tension some, again, very loose woven, lightweight fabric, um, but the sharp needle worked wonderfully. So um, using my machine needle organizer, it would be this Microtex slash sharp category in a size 70 for your needle on your machine. Now pressing this again, super easy, super straightforward. It is 100% cotton. So we are going to crank this up to the lighter side of cotton. It is still, you know, pretty thin. So we don't need to go crazy with the cotton, um, with the heat, but we can also turn up a little bit of the steam as well. And this should press really beautifully. Don't go crazy on the pressing though. I mean, you're not gonna press away the texture of the gauze, but um, you just wanna try and maintain as much of that loftiness as you possibly can. It should retain itself after you wash it the first time, but you really don't need a lot of pressure or heat or steam to get a super, super crisp press in 
cotton gauze fabric. Okay, moving right along, we have this super cute large scale gingham fabric. This is a linen blend. It's 49% Lyocell, which is a brand name of rayon, 25% linen, 16% viscose, which is another type of rayon, and 10% cotton. But when you have something that's like linen in terms of the weave, but it has some of those other fabrics like rayon that don't wrinkle terribly, or if they do, they kind of fall out on their own, it will help um, your garment, you know, stay looking nice and crisp while still having the freedom and beauty of a linen. And that's exactly what we have here. Cutting this, super, super simple. Um, even though it has all that rayon in it, it's really not super shifty. The rayon adds more of a soft hand feel than it does any other quality of rayon. Um, it is a little, I mean, it is a little bit, but not, not that much. Not that much. It would be a very small headache, not a migraine like the first fabric would be when it comes to cutting this out and getting it sewn together. You can use regular scissors on this. Um, I, mine cut through it just fine. I have the, you know, dressmaker shears from Kai, something substantial, good quality um, scissors. So, you would be good in that front. You can also uh, lay down paper on this and you know, the pattern pieces aren't gonna shift around too, too much with the weight of your pattern weights. It is a little bit softer of a hand, so they do wanna shift a little bit. Um, so you could really go either way with this, pinning and cutting or using paper weights and a really good new nice uh, rotary blade. Um, I think you could get away with that too, which I know is my preference. If I can do that, that's what I wanna do. Okay, in terms of sewing machine needles, we're doing a little test. Uh, learning my lesson from the gauze fabric, this one again, the quality of linen is that it is um, woven very lightly. That's what makes it so breathable and comfortable to wear. So that's what I did here and you can see kind of the quality of the stitch that I was able to get with that. And um, I used the same one as last time, the size 70 uh, Microtex Sharp needle. Um, I use the size 70 because it is a little bit lightweight, um, but you could definitely go up to 80 on this and I think you would be fine with either one of these two. Okay, pressing anything with linen, but it also has cotton and rayon, all of those are going to stand up to just, as just about as much heat um, as you want. I'm not going to go full blast, you know, all the way up to cotton, but you know, the higher end of the wool silk with a lot of steam that will produce a really nice balance between dry heat and wet heat. So if you watch this, you can see with one little pass, it really just nips that in the bud and everything is pressed super, super, super flat. All right, next up, I pulled this really bright, beautiful, fun window pane print that is 60% cotton and 40% viscose rayon. So I pulled this because I wanted to show you guys that you can use more substantial fabrics in the summer and still have a very sharp look that's still comfortable to wear. Um, and this will hold up better to some of your patterns that have a little bit more design detail, you know, a waistband, pleats, you know, things that, you know, really need to hold their shape. Um, you can still use beautiful fabrics like this one, even though it's not super lightweight. It is still, you know, lightweight and drapey. It's going to gather really well if that's what you want to do with it. Um, you can see that here, how it folds in on itself. It would make a beautiful circle skirt, you know, all of that. Um, but it's not, you know, see-through, lightweight, like some of the previous fabrics that we used. And working with a cotton rayon blend like this, that's mostly cotton, is really easy to do. Similar to the linen blend that we just used, just because it has rayon in it doesn't mean that it's going to be hard to use. Um, this one is a little bit shifty. You can see when I pressed it, it wanted to kind of go its own way. So you'd have to be a little bit careful of that. If, you, or if you're used to only sewing with cotton, try something that has a little bit of rayon in it. I think you would really, really enjoy that. Cutting this out is just as easy as cutting any sort of lightweight um, 
cotton fabric. Like I said, it is a little bit shifty because of the rayon content. So just be super careful and use either lots of pins or lots of paper weights or pattern weights and just be really slow and methodical with your cutting. And in terms of sewing this, I, because it is a little bit more hefty and I'm pretty sure it's a twill weave. You could, can you see how the weave is diagonal? So twill weave is what they use to make denim. Um, so you know that it is woven really tightly and very substantial kind of weave. So I went with my good old standard universal size 80 most common needle that most people use and I was able to get a really beautiful stitch with that. You can see both sides there. Uh, pressing this as you just saw whenever I pressed out some of those wrinkles that came from me having this fabric folded up for so long is really easy to do. You can see that there. You could even ping back the steam a little bit more and ping back the heat a little bit more. If you are someone that likes to go slow with your pressing, especially because the longer the dry heat stays on the garment, the more tendency you have for it to burn. So the rayon will burn. Cotton, not so much, but the rayon, it definitely will. So if you are a slow presser who really likes to take their time and the sole plate of the iron stays on the fabric for a long time, go back and, and ping back your heat um, to like a wool or silk and you can ping back the steam as well. But I mean, look at that beautiful crisp seam that you're gonna get. This would make a great shirt dress or anything like with a collar or a button placket or you know, some of those things that you just can't pull off with gauze that well at home, you know what I mean? So this would be really great for those types of summer garments. Okay, a real surprise moment. <laughs> I know you guys did not see this one coming, but I saw this and I just thought, first of all, how fun is this fabric? It's kind of like a fringe. It's kind of like paillettes. It's kind of wild and crazy, but so, so much fun. And if we weren't all quarantined, this would make the perfect summer um, fun like dress that you wear just to be wild and crazy for no reason other than YOLO and you want to just live your best life. Um, this fabric is 100% polyester as you can imagine. Uh, it has these really cool die cut petals and then each petal is um, cut from a row of polyester and then that is stitched on and you can see all the stitches in the back. So when you are working with a fabric like this, you are gonna to wanna to pick a pattern that is very simple. So I'm talking about an A-line dress that's literally two pattern pieces, your front and your back. Um, you want to maybe add this just as a sleeve accent to something else. You're not going to want to pick something that has, you know, princess seams and a waistband and a collar and a this and a that. You just need to keep it super, super simple and let the fabric do the talking. When it comes to cutting this out, you, similar to fur, this has something called nap, which is like when the fabric has a direction to it. So even though the petals are going both sides, you need to decide, are, um, is it gonna to be top to bottom or top to bottom this way? This one is a lot more loftier and they kind of stick out more, whereas this one they lay a little bit more flat. So you need to decide which direction you want them to go. Kind of like how velvet, you know, if you rub your hand one way, it's shiny and you rub your hand the other way and it's dark. Um, that's the same thing. So you decide that. And then when you go to cut out your pattern pieces, you're going to lay your pattern pieces down and then you're going to trace out your pattern design onto the back of this fabric. And then anytime like vertical seams are okay, but anytime that you are going across horizontally, like for your hem, for example, you want to put your scissors up underneath the petals and you can kind of feel them there and you want to cut sliding through the fabric, making sure you're not cutting through any of the petals. See how those are hanging off the edge? 
that's what you want in order to maintain that really pretty fringe look like your hem is not going to be a traditional hem where you fold it under two times and top stitch and all of that in fact um your hem's probably just going to be this maybe maybe this turned under one time or even just surged but if your petals lay flat and lay over that cut seam then you really shouldn't have to hem it at all which is a bonus um okay and then when it comes to sewing this thing Again, you have to be a little bit thoughtful um, when you do that. This piece here is actually sewn. Can you see that? How cool, right? I might have done, I might have mixed up naps because I wasn't really paying attention. No, they all go this way. They all go this way. But what you need to do is on your seam that you are going to be sewing, again, you take your scissors, you have to come in here with each of these rows of petals and cut away any petal that is close to your seam allowance because you do not want any petals in this area of your fabric. And that is similar to like if you sew with sequins, you want to take those out that's kind of more to like save your machine and your needles but this one you don't want this like you don't want to have a petal like tucked into here you want everything to be frilly and three-dimensional and fun like that but because this one has kind of like the stripe detail with the colors it's really easy to match those up and so long as you don't have any petals in your way you will get a really beautiful beautiful seam on the inside and we're going to move to pressing now you can see that because we cut all those away all we really have is a couple layers of polyester so that is a synthetic fabric so we're going to ping this down to synthetic i don't think polyester likes uh steam very much because it is not a very porous fabric so we're just going to go with a super low heat we're going to press our seams open being mindful to just use the tip of our iron you can see that the aliso irons have a super super pointy precision tip that makes that really easy to do because we don't want to press out any of the volume that we have on these petals and you can see just with that couple of passes that i did we've already got it kind of laying open on its own come back over here and then you can do the same thing again being very gentle and very low on the heat. Polyester not, will not just burn, it will straight up melt. Um, and after you've spent all that time um, cutting out your fabric, cutting away the petals and all of that, you don't wanna screw it up here at the very, very end. But I just thought that that was just such a fun, unique, different type of uh, fabric that I think would be fun for summer. Something with a lot of volume and um, it could be really, really exciting. So. Okay, last up for our little summer fabric journey is this really pretty uh, rayon spandex blend. It's 93% lyocell rayon and 7% spandex. So you are going to get a beautiful amount of stretch, um, probably more than 100%. Let me see here. Hold that. Yeah, so maybe even like 125% or something like that. Um, and I pulled this one because you can wear knit in summer. A lot of knits are 100% polyester and they can be a little bit annoying and sweaty and not that much fun to wear in the summertime. But if you get one that's made of rayon, then you've got a beautiful man-made fabric that's cool to the touch, really lightweight, easy to wear, you know, all of that stuff. So that's why I pulled this one for you guys. Joanne has a good Julian different prints in this rayon spandex blend. So if these yellow puppies aren't for you, you can find a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and unlike the first knit fabric that we talked about, this one, yes, it has a lot of rayon in it, but because it doesn't have that polyester and the nylon it is not nearly as shifty and annoying to work with as the first one when it comes to cutting this out I think that your regular old pattern weights and rotary cutter are going to be just fine you don't need a special scissor or anything like that you should be able to cut this out no problem um, when it comes to sewing we're going to go back to our ballpoint and our jersey needles this one is a little bit heavier weight than the last one you probably can get away with it with a size 80 um, but I I chose a ballpoint 
Jersey needle in size 70 and it also worked fine. So whatever you have on hand, um, this is how it came out. And you can see you get a lot of stretch going this way with that zigzag stitch. And then this is what it looks like on the right side. Even when you pull it apart, they still hold on pretty good considering. Um, but of course you can use your serger as well if you wanna do that. And then we're gonna press this open. It is mostly rayon, so we don't have to just stay on the synthetic. We can go up to, you know, middle of the wool silk situation. And then we can even ping up a little bit of steam here and lightly press that open and you can see it comes together really easily in a beautiful beautiful little seam results from those settings on the Aliso Pro iron. Well that is going to do it for me today. I hope you were able to take away some fun lessons about sewing with summer fabrics and maybe you will give one of these a try or something similar that you've never worked with before. Be sure to check the description box for links to all of these fabrics. And you will also find a link to the Aliso Pro Iron and a coupon code. If you're in the market for a new iron, I highly recommend um, you grabbing one of their irons. But that is gonna do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Bye.